No viewers, Alan here. Thanks for joining me in the workshop again. So, make or break time for the engine. The posties delivered the bits that I was waiting for, so final assembly and then we'll test it. Fingers crossed. Let's go and find out how it turned out. So as part of a final assembly process, I wanted to check the compression. It seemed to be down a bit, so I pulled the valves out and um, uh, reground them. And in the process I got thoroughly ticked off with the fiddle ass messing around with these E-clips and the big spring from the valve trying to launch them into e-space. So I just knocked up this quick plate and uh, as you can see it makes a difficult job ridiculously easy. Just slide the slide the e-clip into place. That's it. The sides of the groove stop it from buggering around and job done. I should have made this thing up very early in the piece. It's a lot easier than the messing around I was doing. You see before I made that tool up these uh, things were getting quite scratched from messing around with screwdrivers and pliers and so on. But, uh, yeah, So there's just a, a couple of washers under there to hold the valves uh, in position. Right, one start on the cam timing now and I thought I'd begin by validating that my camshaft is correctly ground. Now um, the degree wheel that uh, is, reflects what happens uh, with the crankshaft um, hides a lot of complexity and it confused me so I made my own chart up where I basically unrolled it to a linear uh, presentation. One of the confusing factors is that the uh, camshaft does one revolution for every two revolutions of the crankshaft but also the degree wheel um, presentation really hides where both valves are closed. The information's there but it's not easy to see but in my rolled out view it's much more obvious. To explain the setup, um, I've got two dial gauges. One on this one is on the exhaust valve, and the one further away is on the inlet valve. And you can see that they're both moving at the moment because we're in the overlap, and both valves are partially open. The overlap runs from um, five degrees before top dead centre on the crankshaft to 15 degrees afterwards. So there's 20 degrees of overlap. But we're measuring on the camshaft here, so all those values get halved. So um, the uh, timing chart says that we should hit the midpoint of the intake lobe, or 110 degrees on the, cam sh on the crankshaft, sorry, which maps to 55 here. So rotating around and watching the further dial gauge, uh, we can see it hopefully maxes out about there. So that's the midpoint of the intake cam, so that's good so far. We keep going and it should close at um, 45 degrees after bottom dead centre on the crankshaft which maps to 112 degrees here on the camshaft. And we can see that that's about right, we're a bit over it for some reason, but somewhere near it. We keep on going, both valves are closed now and we come around to where the exhaust starts to open 55 degrees before bottom dead centre on the crankshaft or about 242 um, measured on the camshaft here and uh, I can feel it's just um, hitting the mark there so you see the exhaust opening now and it should hit its midpoint at three at um, 110 degrees before top dead centre on the crankshaft which maps to 305 degrees here on the camshaft so we keep going there's 300 and you can see the exhaust valve is at maximum opening now around 305 so that's good and then back to the start so I think within uh, reasonable tolerance my camshaft is correct which is a great relief so, settings valve timing. Um, when I had the um, valve chest uh, and camshaft uh, connected to the dial gauges, I put an index mark on this collar which I made um, to mark the opening point of the inlet valve. And um, I have these uh, little capstan type holes in here so I can hold this um, 
so I could hold the camshaft steady while I locked up the, the screws here. So that allowed me to, um, if we just go backwards, you'll be able to see that as I come around to five degrees before top dead center, I'm right on my timing mark here. So hopefully that's got the valve timing sorted. So it can make some encouraging sucking and blowing noises now. Which I imagine you can hear. There doesn't seem to have a lot of compression. The valves aren't leaking because I tested them after I reground them. So uh, I haven't got any cylinder head gasket or sealer in there. And I haven't done the spark plug up very tight. So that might have something to do with it. But uh, yeah. Well, we'll press on and hope for the best. Okay, well let's uh, crank it over and see if anything happens. Another sausage. It's got enough compression. So checking that we've got spark and that the timing is correct. You may or may not be able to see the spark, but uh, it fires uh, as the, this mark comes past 20 before, and the red light on the unit goes off as it sparks. So whether the camera will pick up any of those spark events, I don't know. But in any case, we've got spark and it's happening at the right time. It actually fired then, I think. get a couple of half-hearted fires then. I the, the, haven't done anything with the carburetor, it's just as it came out of the box. So uh, I'm starting to think the issue is fuel. We've got plenty of spark at the right time, so it's either compression or fuel. Well, I've just noticed there's a bit of an oil leak here, which I think is going to be quite a telling symptom. If you watch around this cylinder head bolt, there was oil bubbling, so I think the, uh, the cylinder head to cylinder joint needs uh, goop. I'll just uh, run him over a bit and see if you can see what I'm talking about. So if you just watch there, I, I noticed a bubble in the oil. So I think I'm losing compression around the cylinder to cylinder head joint, so I think that's going to have to get some attention. So I can't remember where I left off now. Anyway, I took the cylinder head off, cleaned it up and reassembled with um, some Loctite 510 uh, anaerobic sealant. And that uh, seemed to noticeably increase the compression. And uh, when I put the first put the cylinder head back on without the um, cam box, so both valves were firmly shut, there was a very noticeable reluctance to, for the, this lot to turn over against it was bouncing off the compression a very noticeable increase in, in compression so that all sounded pretty good but when I uh, did a couple of tests uh, I found I had a new problem it now wants to arc, or does, arc the spark arcs from here across to there it wasn't doing that before and I can only assume that the increase in compression in the combustion chamber has uh, changed the uh, the way the uh, spark plug is viewing the world. Anyway, so uh, I'm not sure what the best solution is, but what I've tried to do, or we'll tried first, is to replace this thing with um, a brass connector, which is a snug fit on the top of the spark plug and it has a, a hole in it so I'll solder the wire into that um, that's what I'm thinking 
I could cross drill and use a grub screw or something I suppose, but anyway I'll probably solder the wire into that and then because of its shape I'll be able to also put some insulation around here so that seems like progress but naturally there was a snag and the snag was that I managed to lose the copper ceiling washer off the spark plug so after a bit of a head scratch and a suggestion from a mate I uh, found uh, a replacement uh, washer hiding in a, a tap washer ironically so uh, that got me going again and then of course because I now had a replacement and I wasn't stalled I found the original on the floor but that's the way these things go isn't it at least I've got backup now All right, let's see if this thing wants to start God, <laughs> it's a runner, and that only stopped because it ran out of fuel in the. Line. I don't understand why it's not being able to suck fuel up from that. That sounded pretty healthy too. It did. Right, well, I found out what's going on. The uh, pickup tube had fallen off the uh, bung in the front of the tank, so um, the carburetor was sucking air. So we get that fixed up and. Uh, See if we get a reliable start. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. So it seems to be starting pretty easily now. The compression's much higher now. It's filling the room up with smoke now because I'm running it on two-stroke mixture. Can't complain about the way it starts now though. And I actually turned the ignition off then to stop it. We get some of this smoke out of the room. Right, well I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Um, I did give myself a pretty comprehensive checklist of things to uh, go through before I tried to get it started and that uh, nipped a few problems in the bud and uh, as you saw I did have a few problems but I managed to get solutions to all of those and uh, yeah so some thanks here particularly to Greg he's very patient uh, particularly with my struggles with the camshaft uh, I, I, yeah I, I must be losing IQ points as I get older anyway I got there so thanks Greg, I wouldn't have got there without your help. My friend Mark was here today and he, he, uh, he paid for his cup of coffee. He uh, came up with a couple of good ideas including uh, checking the spark plug gap and as it turned out it was uh, 0.2 millimetres and 0.5 was more appropriate. So um, 
thanks Mark. Uh, anyway, it's been quite a journey. If you stuck with me all the way through, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Uh, and uh, I think I'll uh, drain the fuel out of the thing and uh, refill it with um, something like more like 50 to 1 instead of 25 to 1. <laughs> it's a bit smoky. But it's been a, a very interesting project and I've enjoyed all of it. And uh, I think it's the last engine I'll make for a little while though. Anyway, thanks very much for your help and support and uh, look forward to seeing you on whatever I do next. Cheers.